traps that sometimes we don't necessarily run into until we begin to step out into the bigger picture of the body of Christ as it works itself out in various ways and sometimes excuse me I think I'm going to sneeze that <clears throat> we come into counter, we come into contact with people that are from Galilee or from Judea or from Samaria or from Decapolis <clears throat> or from the uttermost parts of the earth and we see that they're different as Paul did <laughs> and we say oh they don't look like us they don't talk like us could they be part of us you know <clears throat> The greatest joy that there is, is in knowing Jesus. Jesus brought us, in the beginning, to himself, that we would know him because he had been with the Father. He had seen the Father, he had known the Father, and then he had spoken those things that the Father said were beneficial to us. But you find that as you begin to grow as a baby Christian, sometimes people want to make you into something that they have in mind as opposed to what God has in mind. So if you find yourself sometimes maybe put upon with these what we call cookie cutters where people are trying to make you into a gingerbread man or to form you into a gingerbread house and you don't like ginger, <laughs> don't be surprised. Let God lead you by his own choice and his own hand because, you see, if you get the opportunity to minister to a wide variety of people that know Jesus, you're going to find that there's a wide variety of people that not only know Jesus but operate differently according to where God has placed them in the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that everybody that just whatever they want to believe in is right or wrong. It doesn't mean that they're not growing in some way and not showing the love of God in a different way that they might be developing a little bit differently. But that once you begin to look in the book of Revelation where Jesus is walking literally at this moment, right now, walking amongst the churches that are in heaven, the candlesticks that are the typology or that are the actual physical representation of what churches are here on earth there's letters to seven churches and this is going to sound amazing but if you look at each one of those churches they don't look alike <laughs> they don't act alike in fact some of them are pretty weird and when you begin to see that God still is in the midst of them working on them and working through them you realize oh wow so God is the one in charge of the church and we're not but aren't we called to go out and to fix them and to change them and to to do what you know we're supposed to do in order to correct them good question can I ask you a question a pretty simple one that I ask everybody anytime that they have a criticism about someone else is that what Jesus told you to do today <laughs> if he did go for it <laughs> you'll answer to Jesus but you know what for me he sent me out you know to share the good news to not condemn but to confirm those that are in love with him that want to enjoy the fellowship of his spirit that are out sharing the gospel of Jesus to those who are desperately in need who want to know where God is how God is and who God is and I think that if you spend your time with Jesus looking to do the things that Jesus has done then you won't be worried about all those others who call upon the name of the Son and might be doing some other strange things that who knows what they're doing <laughs> you focus in on Jesus and you'll find yourself just right in daily light it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost Jesus the author and finisher of our faith I have glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once and for all 
And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected for them that are sanctified, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. If it so be that Jesus is the author, think about that, he's the one who the author of our faith, but he's also the one that's the finisher of our faith. Now, in between times, we're told to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, but isn't working out your salvation one of bringing it out from the inside because you already have it in there? Isn't it one of showing to other people the grace with which you were saved with, <laughs> the, the relationship with which you have with God, the intimacy with which you know God, and the reality of being able to share the good news that Jesus said that we could have intimacy and fellowship with the Father? Isn't it about what Jesus has done and not what you're trying to do to someone else? I think so. How about you? What is God telling you today in daily life? How is it fitting your circumstances? If it doesn't fit, toss it out. But if it does, then maybe God is speaking to you today in the same way. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. You hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, for in times past you walked according to the course of this world. We all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Out of the belly of hell cried I, thou heardst my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. We went through fire and we went through water, but thou brought us up into a wealthy place. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. In the volume of our life's experiences, we're going to go through a variety of experiences that are going to bring us to God, or they're going to force us to depend upon God. Because if they bring us to God, then we know that as we're with Him, then He will bring us through whatever circumstances we're in. If we're far from God, then the circumstances bring us to God to cause us to depend and trust in Him. Because all of your life, there will be tribulation, there will be trials. But Jesus said that if we would do those sayings he said of his, which we find in the Sermon on the Mount, it's Matthew 5 through 8 or whatever. But the point is, is that he said, if you do these things, then when the storms of life come, your house will be like built upon a rock that can withstand the storms because you're trusting in the author and the finisher of your faith. You're not trusting in what you built, but you are trusting in what he built. And what he built is eternal what you built is temporal. So trust God to work out in you, about you, for you, and through you, His salvation. Because what sometimes people are doing around you might be their salvation from some circumstance they don't like. When God wants to put them in the circumstance to accomplish His purpose that He likes. It's all a question of who's in charge. Who's in charge of your life today?